Hello world and welcome to Codebig. Yes, you read the title right. Bootstrap 5 Alpha version is out and it offers some pretty cool features and upgrades out of the box. So, without wasting any time, let's get started. Welcome back guys. For those of you who have been living in the cave and don't know what Bootstrap is, it is the most popular front-end framework used to build modern, responsive and dynamic interfaces for building professional web pages and it has currently taken a major update. Bootstrap 5 Alpha version was officially released on June 16, 2020 after several months of fine-tuning and refining. If we scroll down a bit, you can see the folks working on Bootstrap say, we have been working hard for several months to refine the work started in version 4. And while we feel great about our progress, there is still even more to do. So throughout this video, we will concentrate on those features that we are sure are going to be shipped in the stable version 5 of Bootstrap. If you head over to the GitHub for Bootstrap, you can see it has around 300 open issues and 98 open PR. If you head over to the project board, you see the Bootstrap 5 Alpha is currently under active development and the stable version is still far away. But it is a good practice to stay ahead of the curve by getting to know what will be shipped beforehand in Bootstrap version 5. So without wasting any time, let's get started. The first update I'm excited about is jQuery was removed. So if you don't know already, jQuery is a general purpose library that allows you to access elements in the document without writing a lot of JavaScript change the content of the document, respond to user interaction and much more awesome stuff. Because of this very reason, Bootstrap for the last 8 years have been consistently using jQuery. But in the recent years, jQuery has become quite a large and bloated framework that requires the website using it to download the libraries which add a trivial load time even when not a single line of jQuery has been written or used on the website. If you are a front-end web developer using modern JavaScript framework or libraries like React, Vue or Angular, I know you are absolutely hate using jQuery because it operates directly on the DOM leading to performance issues. The whole issue is, if you want to use regular bootstrap with React, you could use the basic features without any issues but as your layout grows in size, you would inevitably encounter jQuery in your code which would lead to performance issue. To overcome this, developers started using a React wrapper around Bootstrap like React Bootstrap which solves this issue but now you have increased the size of your application. Since we are rendering our web page on the client side, we need to keep the size of our application under control to allow our users to have a nice experience. As JavaScript has evolved quite nicely as the time passed, Bootstrap 5 removed the dependency it had on jQuery and all the querying features has to be done with traditional JavaScript code. This came with two benefits. The first one being Bootstrap is no more dependent on any other framework and will work well with modern JavaScript libraries and frameworks. The size of the library is reduced drastically. Before moving on, I want to talk about switching from jQuery to vanilla JavaScript. You need not break your head around this. In simple terms, if you know the basics of JavaScript, then you're awesome, you can work on Bootstrap 5. But if you know only jQuery or were dependent on it, make sure you learn the basics of JavaScript. The next feature I would like to talk about is the responsive font size. Designing a website that looks good across multiple viewport is quite a challenge for some developers till date. Well, you might suggest that everyone start using media queries as it is a great tool that solves the topography problem by specifying different font sizes for different viewports. I personally feel it would be great if there was a better way of doing this and Bootstrap 5 came with responsive font size which solved this issue. Responsive font size will automatically resize the topography element according to the size of the user's viewport through the use of responsive font size engine. RFS offers the ability to resize basically every value for any CSS property with units like margin, padding, border radius and so on. How cool is that? RFS engine is a preprocessor and a postprocessor 
powered mechanism that automatically calculates the appropriate font size based on the user's screen size or the viewport. So let us quickly look at some simple examples. If we wrote a hello title class in SAS with a font size of 4 rem, then the compiled on version would look something like this on the right. As you can see, Bootstrap 5 has removed the overhead of writing media queries for responsive web fonts. The next update is removal of Internet Explorer 10 and 11 support. Some of you might start arguing that the web application you write now is not targeting a wide range of audience. Don't worry, as of today, no one is using Internet Explorer and you should be happy that they took this move because now you can concentrate on building web applications that are modern and run well on all modern browsers. Just make sure all your styling works well on Chrome, Safari, Edge and Firefox because these browsers account for 94% of desktop browser market share. Moving on, we have changes to gutter width unit of measurement. CSS offers way to specify sizes or lengths of elements using various unit of measurement such as pixel, m, rem, viewport and view height. While pixels are considered to be widely known and used for its absolute unit nature, we should remember that pixels do not change based on any other element which is not good for modern responsive web design. If you looked into Bootstrap deeply, you would know they have been using pixels for gutter width for quite a long time which will not longer be the case in Bootstrap 5. According to Bootstrap 5's official GitHub project, the gutter width will now on be in rem instead of pixels. The next thing I would like to talk about is the removal of card deck. Currently in Bootstrap 4, in order to set equal width and equal height for cards that aren't attached to one another, you would use a card deck. But in Bootstrap 5, the team have removed the card deck since the new grid system offers more responsive control. This is a good fix as we are not polluting the framework with unnecessary classes. If you have not used cards in Bootstrap before, then don't worry about it that much. Next, we will look into navbar optimization. The Bootstrap navbar component is a core part of Bootstrap that gets used all the time. But the previous version of Bootstrap, we needed to have some decent amount of markup in order to make our navbar work. However, we overcame this issue in Bootstrap version 4 by using nav, dev elements and unordered list. Currently in Bootstrap 4, we are using inline block to display the option but in Bootstrap 5, it will be removed. They are using the flex shorthands and since dark themes are in the trend, they also implemented the dark dropdown via the dropdown menu dark class that turns the dropdown into a black background. The next feature is custom SVG icon library. In version 3, as you know, Bootstrap offered around 250 reusable icon components in a font format called Glyph Icon and in Bootstrap 4, it was completely scrapped out. And web designers and developers needed to rely on the free icon fonts like Font Awesome. Although most people don't see any problem in it, I don't personally like using third-party library just to get free fonts increasing the size of my application. If we think about it more carefully, we would be using a maximum of 7 icons on a web page and for that we would be trying to fetch in case we use a CDN or load thousands of icons that are not needed. Bootstrap 5 promises a brand new SVG icon library crafted carefully by Mark, the co-founder of Bootstrap and I'm personally happy about this feature. Before I go into the last update that is causing some confusion in the community, I would like to talk about the update that was done to the Bootstrap class. Bootstrap 5 will not be interesting without new Bootstrap CSS classes. Bootstrap 4 had more than 1500 CSS classes that were added and the same can be anticipated in Bootstrap 5 as well. Not just addition of new classes, but some existing classes may also be removed if they are obsolete. Some of the CSS class that are already removed according to the Bootstrap 5 official GitHub project tracking board are form row, form inline and list inline, card deck as discussed earlier. Here are some of the new classes that are going into Bootstrap 5. GX, 
classes to control horizontal or column gutter width gy classes to control the vertical or row gutter width and g class to control the horizontal and vertical gutter width row calls auto finally we will look into the controversial topic of bootstrap file switching from jackal to hugo in simple terms jackal is a free and open source static site generator if you have any previous experience in wordpress or joomla then it works exactly the same way bootstrap 4 had been a great tool to integrate with jackal through sas and life was good if you wanted to build a static website but now bootstrap 5 has decided to go with hugo which is pretty much the same thing but is much faster and much flexible i will tell you how in another video of mine but for now the reason for this shift is hugo is much faster i mean we all want things done fast and quickly right so we should not blame bootstrap for wanting the same well if you're not building static websites using jackal wordpress or joomla don't worry you're not a part of this confusion and congratulations on getting to know all the features of bootstrap 5 before head if you like this video drop a like and subscribe see you in the next video happy coding until then